Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Wearing my Acura hat today because let me get some housekeeping out of the way and some things to come. Val from Acura is coming down to Houston tomorrow and going to spend the whole weekend with me uh, in preparation. Then he's going to go up to Dallas for the Southwest Audio Fest. So this weekend is going to be a lot of fun. He's never been down here. At least his wife hasn't been down here and he hasn't been down here in a long time. And so we're going to go to the rodeo and watch uh, Lainey Wilson. I got tickets to see her. And if you haven't seen her, I featured her on my channel in a YouTube video where she did the duet with Jelly Roll. And she made that song 10 times better than the studio version with just Jelly Roll. So check that out. Maybe I'll put up an excerpt if you haven't seen that. Go, go check out my video on that or find it on YouTube. Uh, so I'll put a lot of stuff probably on Instagram. I've been using Instagram a lot more than YouTube, guys. YouTube doesn't pay anything anyway. So um, follow me on Instagram if you haven't, if you want to see more of the fun personal stuff. Also, that following Wednesday... Doug and JR are flying into Houston. We're going to celebrate my birthday here in Houston and then drive up to Dallas together on Thursday. And uh, I want to thank some people for uh, Dallas Audio Society just today invited me to dinner while I would be up there for the Southwest Audio Fest. But I, I apologize. I've already got some plans. And I wanted to tell you guys, if you don't have plans for Dallas Audio Fest, obviously my table's full. But if you want to book to be at the same places, I will be at night. We're going to do the Columbian Country Club on Thursday night, they have live music, really cool. Uh, the Mexican on Friday night, it's a restaurant, nice restaurant, really close by the hotel. And then Saturday night, going to a real nice area of the town for Bistro 31. So you're welcome to join, uh, make reservations there, and uh, the more the merrier. Now, getting to the topic of today, I'm going to continue my series on the Bach because, oh, let me tell you another thing that's coming. I'm going to, have to be on a roll of just doing show coverage because it's Dallas. Then I go to New York for a surprise. And then I go to Montreal for the Montreal show nonstop. So cool gear and all the stuff I'm known for in that realm, I'll be putting out. Uh, but I'm also known for obviously the Bach and DSP and whatnot. And the Bach has been on fire uh, ever since that Tom Martin video and then also... Uh, the demos in Florida, and just uh, gradually this year, it's just been going crazy. So I wanted to continue my series of addressing the most, just covering all the bases. I did the Florida show, 45-minute demo you could watch. I did my tutorial just recently where I walked through all the tips, tricks, troubleshooting, everything I've given you to testimonials. I've given you everything possible. And I, I have people over here constantly with demos, plus uh, at Expona and Florida. But I wanted to do one more thing. Well, I've done this in the past. I've even done the site tour of Princeton, where Theoretic Applied Physics and Edgar is. But also, I've done Zooms in the past with him. But now with the release of ORC, all of my members that have gotten the uh, ORC, wanted to have a Zoom with Edgar, ask questions, troubleshoot, kind of just talk it through and understand how to use it because it's something new. And so we did a Zoom. It's over two hours long. Now, only my members, I think I'm over 70 now, members that are going to get that in the private. But you can join the membership section and, and watch the entire two hours. But I'm going to start breaking it up into some parts and releasing them public and things that I think are applicable and would be helpful to those that... Um, aren't in my membership group uh, and own the box or want to know more about it before buying. And it's great to hear from the actual designer. <laughs> you know, you can believe me, you can believe Tom Martin, you can believe these testimonials and you, your own ears when you listen at these uh, demos, but nothing beats. <laughs> or if you want to argue, here's the guy. You want to argue with a rocket scientist? He's a rocket scientist, a Princeton professor, but he's also an avid audiophile. Uh, acoustician. He's been on the credits of David Chesky Recordings, recording engineer. His wife is a musician. He's very into music, one of the preeminent audiophiles you'll find. And so he's dedicated 10 plus years to the Bach and now another five years to this ORC. And you're, you're just not going to find anybody smarter in the hobby. You're not going to find anybody, any company with the wherewithal to do as much R&D an investment without any return for a decade that Princeton and he's done. Uh, so those people that like to fight DSP, they, believe it or not, there's still some that are trying uh, desperately. But you know, whatever. Uh, you can you can argue with him if you want, but it's not gonna it's not gonna come out too well. In this video, though, we 
pretty much aren't even talking about non-DSP believers at this point. That's like believing black and white is better than color TV. But what he does address is why he came out with ORC versus the existing DSP and measurement tools from REW, Dirac, all the other ones that were good. He admits that, that they were better than certainly nothing and could do well, but were always estimates and were always approximations and never really took into account your ear, your head, and your torso. And then that led to some people perceiving DSP as bad if they didn't know how to address for it. And he's got the right way to address for it now because he takes in-ear measurements. And so this is a whole nother level that's never been done before. There is no competition. If you've heard DSP before, well, you haven't heard this. So I wanted to just share in this brief video, an excerpt from the um, Zoom where he talked about that particular difference. Then in subsequent videos, I'll try to release as many as I can before Dallas. I'll show you other parts where we go into even more depth from this two hour Zoom. So enjoy guys. Great. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much, Jason. It's really lovely to be here. I recognize almost everyone, practically everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you for being uh, with me tonight. Um, yes, Jason has asked me to uh, do a little walkthrough uh, with ORC. Uh, I'm pretty excited by ORC, and I would like you to uh, get to experience it. Many of you have already experienced it. Uh, there are many bells and whistles to ORC, but however, there is also a default setting that's designed to give you the optimal room correction for most conditions. Uh, those of you who are tweakers, I'm not going to resist playing with the parameters and tweaking, of course. But um, I'm going to first do uh, two walkthrough. One of them, just uh, how to use it on a, on a high level without having to worry about tweaking. And most of the time, you're going to get the best results that way. Uh, and then I'm going to go into more details and show you some of the knobs and how you might want to tweak them and explore if you happen to be the type of you know, a person who wants to a tweaker and explorer. Uh, many people want to concentrate on the music and forget about tweaking, but it's a hobby and it's a, it's can be fun to explore. Um, at any point, please, uh, you can re raise your hands if you want to stop me and ask questions, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll interrupt myself every once in a while and ask for questions. Okay, well, uh, most of you know how to use Bhakti SP, but ORC is a module that we had to uh, we, we recently added to uh, back the SP version 14 and that module um, we decided to give it uh, um, as a present to all our existing customers uh, anybody un until Mar anybody who buys actually back the SP for uh, by Monday or Tuesday or by March 3rd uh, we'll get to have it as a present um, we are porting back ORC right now to the back SP uh, the back SP has a different interface but the engine is the same so uh, the job is just a mechanical job. It's not really something that requires more research. The research has been done already. It's been for the past four years. And um, let me first describe the whole idea of ORC. It's quite different than any other uh, room correction because it's based on in-ear measurements done with the same microphones that you have been using to make back filters. Uh, the whole idea is to correct the sound of your speakers and room at, at the interest of your ear canals. Now, this carries some caveats or some dangers, rather. If you do it haphazardly, um, you might actually produce bad sound as opposed to good sound. So it took us four years to understand how humans hear uh, and how, uh, first, there's a physics all the way from the speakers, to room reflection to your ear canal, but then there's also the psychoacoustics. So all of that um, is a pretty complex picture. But the, the difference between that and other room correction, as some of you already know, is that other room corrections require on free field measurements. You put a microphone in a free field, um, and you typically take many measurements, uh, and you average them. Um, many, many packages work on this process. Um, this can give you a decent results, especially if you, if you tweak it a little bit. A lot of people are happy with that. But we think things can be done better or at least more accurately. Uh, the, the problem with taking many measurements and average them is that you, the average is wrong pretty much everywhere by definition. Um, the other problem is that um, you are never uh, in the free field. You are in the present of your head and your brain is getting the audio through your ear canals and pinna. Now, why should you correct for the pinna? Some people will argue you should not be correcting for the pillar because uh, you should be uh, making the speaker response flat at some at, in the area and space where you put your head. Well, in the reality, that's probably okay, 
if you don't listen to spatial audio. But Bach is all about spatial audio. So if you already have Bach, uh, a, a, a correcting for the pinna can 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 reap huge benefits, as uh, some of you already have experienced. Basically, Bach makes the speakers disappear because your brain get um, through cross light cancellation. Your brain get the cues gets the cues to locate sound in three D. But there's still a signature of the speaker. The speakers themselves are biasing your brain. They are, uh, any source in space when it emits sound you, uh, gets colored by the head and the pinna. So your brain uses that coloration to, to locate sound. And it uses that coloration to locate your speaker. Now, if you're, if you're doing regular stereo, that, that might be OK. But with uh, uh, because the, the speakers are there, you, the images stuck to the speakers. But with spatial audio, especially with, with Bach, you have the advantage of uh, going beyond what the speakers are. So we need we need to compensate for what the speaker is doing to the sound as it interacts with your pinna and your head and your torso. Okay, so that's the essence of it. Plus, we we have the advantage of being able to do that because we have these in ear microphones. They are actually scientific instruments. They're actually made in a lab behind me, and they're calibrated in an echoic chamber, and they're matched within a small fraction of one dB. And they're flat all the way to the nicest frequency, typically tw uh, actually either 20 hertz or uh, 20 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz, depending which model you buy. Not the nicest frequency, but 20 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz. So these are scientific instruments. You already have them. We have head tracking, which we, we worked hard on developing and perfecting. So we have an advantage on being able to do what I've always thought should be done, So um, which is do room correction with head tracking at your ears, Compensate for for the uh, pinna uh, effect that the speakers are exciting, and the result I'll let you judge. Of course, I'm not going to bias you. Of course, we did a lot of testing over the past year or so. We've been working on this for four years. A um, lot of you have already been writing their impressions. I let the blogs and the critics and the uh, the hobbyists uh, describe what they hear. What I'm going to do next is show you how. You can use that uh, technology. So I'll stop right here for a couple of minutes before I just, before I uh, uh, start sharing the screen and getting into the nitty gritty of the software.